Well, good morning, everybody. And it's Australia Day and uh, no rest for the people that are hard at work. <laughs> well, today I see more people. It's one of my favorite times of the week because we get to talk about lead generation. And today we're going to be talking about something that I don't know a lot about. And um, I hear it. people talk about it regularly. And I think it's important to know, but I'll leave it to the experts. And none other than Jamie Hayes, who's the CEO of a number of companies, Keto Fitness, Diet Flex, and Healthy Inspirations. And he's made it his mission for the last, what, I'd say 30 plus years to uh, be a constant student in marketing and finding out the things that work and the things that don't. So I'm going to hand it over to Jamie, where he's going to help us maximizing our marketing efficiency by doing remarketing. So good day, uh -huh. Jamie. <laughs> remarketing you know uh, steve i'm going to show you something. i'm going to start by showing you something and this is where remarketing started it is the old 1 to 31 system <laughs> and inside most people wouldn't even know what that looks like you've got your 1 to 31 and uh you've got your uh january through to december and I want to start with a remarketing story from Fitness First. Oh, okay, great. And if David Atchison is watching or any of his team members, because when we moved to Brisbane in 1999, uh, I went and checked out this huge, big, uh, like million dollar club. Uh, I think it was Mount Cravat or some, somewhere like that. And, um, and I sort of, did a tour, you know, I suppose I was mystery shopping them, you know, with a salesperson, they registered my details. And guess what? I never had a follow up phone call. <laughs> now, about four or five years later, the operator sold out to Tony Deled and Fitness First. This is about four or five years later. And then guess what? I get a remarketing call. I get a call. Oh, hi. Is Jack here from Fitness First? You know, we're located, you know, over here. You, you, you paid the club a visit, you know, uh, a while ago, and we wondered if you were, um, you know, doing any exercise at the moment, and you'd be interested in coming on down. No wonder Fitness First grew to a fantastic, you know, and large organisation across Australia, because even though they were doing it manually, they handled that remarketing process. So uh, kudos to Fitness First and their sales management because um, you know, it was a great example. And that was four or five, you'd think I was a stale lead. No way in the world. Uh, you know, I, I was living the other side of town, so I wasn't really a prospect, um, completely inconvenient. But you know, it, it showed the power of remarketing. Look, uh, they say that uh, uh, people's leads die within a day or two now. and. Um, I think it's quite interesting how we now saying, well, pick up the telephone quickly, respond to an inquiry quickly. However, sometimes we get the, let's say the, the world gets in the way, doesn't it? And um, other things pop up. But if sometimes we just need a little bit of a reminder that it was important to us on that moment, uh, three months ago or two weeks ago, it's just, uh, it's timing is everything, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. And you know, as people's circumstances change, you know, and, you know, you, people can feel forgotten, but uh, suddenly I didn't feel forgotten. <laughs> and I was impressed by the professionalism. It was a nice phone call. Hi, Jamie, you know, it's Jack from Fitness First. Um, just following up, you visited us quite a while ago. I wonder if you're doing the exercise. Uh, I said, not really, are, are you thinking about it? <laughs> you know, how polite is that? <laughs> so it was, it was absolutely excellent. So I do remember that. Now, Steve, and I do have some things to share with everybody about remarketing this morning as well, typically. With the remarketing, I've been hearing about you've got to have things in place digitally these days to make sure remarketing works. For instance, I know that uh, we spoke some time ago about having the Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, and also LinkedIn Pixel connected yeah. to your yeah. um uh, website and if that's not there it's very difficult to do your if you're doing let's say Facebook ads it's very difficult to do the remarketing because there's nothing to connect it to so given as uh, the the remarketing is done now automatically mm -hmm. instead of bringing kicking up the phone and picking up that one to 31 file uh, uh, 
lead, so to speak, and making the call. Is this becoming something that is a must do instead of just something that's a good idea now? Well, it's only a must do if you want to optimize membership sales, grow your membership and optimize profit. I mean, <laughs> if, if you want to work longer hours for less money and have a business that's not worth as much or is at risk because you're not optimizing profitability, then don't do it. But if you want to, if you want to optimize profitability, optimize sales, then you really need to consider remarketing. Now, Steve, just before you get too carried away with all the tech stuff, and you know, this could be pretty intimidating. I just want to remind people of this fantastic book, Who Not How, which is, I'm, I'm going to, you know, share a few ideas or reinforce a few ideas. And people might say, Oh, Jesus, you know, all that tech stuff and automation. And, you know, I don't know how to do that. So I've got to learn how to do that and or pay for a tech stack, which is all these different software and get them all connected and stuff like that. And that might take me three months or six months or nine months or 12 months before I fully execute and implement it and doing a whole lot of courses and stuff like that. And that's asking yourself, you know, once you realize, ah, this is what we should be doing, but I don't know how, because you're asking yourself the how question. The alternative thing to, for an entrepreneur or an, a manager to say is, oh, I can see what we should be doing, and then simply ask, who can help me do it? So I can execute quickly and, 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 uh, and also get those sales quickly <clears throat> eventually I might be able to do it all myself, great, or <clears throat> train team members to do it all ourselves and buy the software and all that sort of stuff. But today I just want to share the what, not the how. If you say, oh, we should be doing this, this is the what we should be doing, then I encourage you to reach out and you are full of contacts, you know, I mean, we help our partners. We, we do the how for them, you know. Um, and uh, so you, instead of asking yourself, how do I do it? Ask, who can help me do this straight away so we don't miss out on all those sales over the next three, six or nine months. And I think you did a calculation. We had a chat yesterday of the missing money from uh, the potential one or two sales per week. I mean, it, it, it's like $100,000. It really is a lot of money you're leaving on the table. You're spot on. And uh, I think <laughs> your, your rev up earlier was saying, if you don't want to have a bit of t extra time with your family, if you don't want to have a business that's successful, and if you don't um, maximize all the opportunities so you can have a lifestyle, then don't do what we're going to talk about. And I, I, I think it's a, a wake-up call for everybody. And as we did yesterday, um, the cost of losing just one sale a day, just one, and mm. or not creating that lead, but just losing it is quite significant. It, it is hundreds of thousands of dollars because we don't see it, we don't miss it, but we, we don't look at it as, well, how many sales have we lost? It was like, how many sales we want to get? Um, That's right. Completely in reverse. So um, remarketing, uh, finding out what we need to do, and I, I concur with what Jamie's saying, guys, uh, find the who um, and find out who can do it for you if you are not a marketing genius, but you know what to do. So, Jamie, why don't we tell our – nice to see you there. Sure. So thanks for joining us. Oh, hi, Shane. Yeah, great to see you there. A little bit about what we should do and, um, uh, and, how, and how the uh, process works so people get a little bit of an understanding on it. Cool. I've got a little PowerPoint. I'm not as good as this as you are tech-wise, but let's give it a go. So uh, we'll flip over to uh, my little PowerPoint here and let's go uh, play from start. Uh, let's see. No, I beg your pardon, Steve. Wrong one. There we go. Play from start. Yeah, using remark. Can you see my screen, Steve? Absolutely. It looks good. Okay. Thanks so much. So firstly, let's look where leads come from. And, uh, and, and this is just a bit of a preface here in the beginning because the traditional organic 
free leads, you know, we talk about organic traffic and the leads we don't pay for. Uh, and let's compare that against advertising or paid traffic, which cost you money. And I remember the old days when you and I were working together, I think I had a budget per club of $1,500 to $2,000 in letterbox flyers and newspaper ads and things like that, you know, operation traffic lights and all sorts of things like that. But we paid money. We paid traffic. We pay, you know, we uh, paid print costs and things like that. But with organic free, typically they contact you. The member contacts you. They, it, it's the prospect that initiates the sales process. And typically it's an inbound inquiry. It's either an info call or a walk-in. And yes, I know they might register on your website or via messenger and things like that, but typically it's an info call and a walk-in and definitely uh, we don't want to throw the baby out with bathwater. Team members should be well-trained in dealing with an info call to lead it to um, an appointment and uh, people must be well trained for a walk in that leads straight to a consultation, you know, with a proper meet and greet procedure. And uh, what does PDR stand for, Steve? As practice. practice, drill, and rehearse. So we do like, we don't call it role play anymore. We call practice, it drill, PDR. Rehearse. PDR, you yeah, know, so this has got to be systemized. Yeah, you just cannot take it for granted that because somebody can pick up the phone and have a conversation, that they know how to competently handle an info call. And exactly the same for a walk-in. And, uh, you know, I've had uh, friends, mystery shop clubs, even the last 12 months during lockdown when people, every sale is just gold and uh, it's just so incompetently handled. Um, so, but let's compare that with advertising paid traffic. Oh, so, and that's going to lead to a sales appointment, hopefully. Um, but with paid traffic, typically the prospect registers online but you initiate the sales process, you initiate the contact or your salespeople do. And so instead of an inbound call, it's an outbound call. It's an outbound follow-up call. So let's just put this in perspective. Many businesses only do the stuff on the left and leave a lot of money on the table because they don't do the stuff on the right, which means paying you know, traffic, paying for ads uh, where people register on their website uh, and uh, and then suddenly the sales process is in control of um, you know the the sales personnel, and so that leads to a sales uh, appointment. So let's take this a bit further. Uh, excuse me. So to do the stuff on the right does require a few skills, or you outsource it instead of asking yourself what I have to do, who's going to do it for me. Um, it needs paid traffic skills. These are completely different to organic posts and stuff like that, which means uh, creative development, you know, which is the, the video, the image, the ads, the offer development. Uh, and in previous sessions, we've spoken about how important it is to get the, the offer in your ads and, you know, the offer in your sales process in alignment. You know, the copy, whether you've got long copy, short copy, are you using words that enter the conversation that's already happening in the consumer's mind uh, and controlling the media, the media buy, which is, you know, um, the, the Facebook ad strategies and of course, Facebook at own Instagram as well. So when I mention Facebook, I'm talking about Instagram. So, but they are specific skills and it's a changing uh, scenario so that you've got to be keeping up to, up to date all the time. People pay a Facebook ad manager up to three and a half thousand dollars per month, you know, and uh, and then they've got media costs on top of that. Um, then if we uh, we look here, they register online, but of course you've got to have a landing page. That's got to have a creative that um, uh, is in alignment with the, with the ads so that people say, oh, this, that you don't want people to bounce when they go to your landing page. And that's got a ha you know, repeat of the offer. Sometimes it's got a nice welcome video. So it's got copy. When I say copy, that's the, the text, you know, the writing. Um, there, there should be remarketing pixels. And you mentioned that. Uh, so that, and we're going to talk a bit more about that. And then automated lead delivery. So that goes straight to the salesperson. And then we've got the phone training, the outbound skills, uh, you know, that's got to happen ASAP. Uh, it's it's got to be disciplined 
uh, you need a lead management system, uh, which could even be a 1 to 31 system like I showed you in that file, and automated follow-up. So uh, that, that just was a, a big picture as to a traditional, um, what I call passive business versus a business that takes advantage of the passive but adds the active as well. Those things on the right-hand side, hmm. all those find the copy, get the landing page, get the pick school sorted out and so forth. This is what we're saying, outsource, get somebody to do it. Because I can tell everyone from experience, the very first time I started to go into digitization four or five years ago and said, oh, I, think, I think I'm going to have to learn something new. And I started to do some of the stuff. It became a tsunami of all of the things I didn't know. And, I, and I'm quite diligent on trying to get things done, but I can assure you, after you start doing all the things yourself and trying to learn all of those multiple skills, um, you'll make massive amounts of mistakes and it will cost you time and money. And Jamie said it earlier, um, I spent time learning and then I thought, oh, I'm a pretty good learner. I can put it in place, but I have genius in certain areas and I can assure you this is an area and I'm just putting a red flag out for everybody. Find the who, find the who. Do not waste your time trying to learn something that you don't know how to do unless you're passionate about it. I'm, yeah. I'm really wrong about this because I, I just over Christmas, I was given all this new stuff to do and I just exploded my brain. <laughs> So and I reached out to Jamie and, and Lana Lee and a few of my friends and they, they helped me because they're much better who's in this area. So I, I just wanted to throw that because I, I think you explained it really well. And there's a lot of things that m must be done, but uh, be warned, find out what needs to be done and then outsource to good people. Absolutely. And there are people doing this all the time. And when we first got into this automated CRM, and I made the mistake of trying to figure out how rather than who, our sales, our B2B sales, franchising sales and stuff like that absolutely died. It took my hand off the wheel, you know, so big mistake. So let's keep on going. There's uh, lots to share here. Uh, I think I'll come back here. And um, so all, remarketing is really automated follow-up. So we mentioned the 1 to 31 manual follow-up system. I definitely... Do not throw the baby out with bathwater. You know, make sure you've got a one thirty at one follow up system. Look, it might, if it's not in a manual like I showed you, it might be using Jim Leads or Jim Sales. They're a fantastic organisation. Good to check them out. So let's have a look at a typical sales funnel. So firstly, um, you, you you run these Facebook ads, and people hopefully notice they view your Facebook ad. Some go one step further and they click through to your landing page and you and all these are measurable, you know, which is the number of views, the number of unique landing page views. Now, some of the people that go to the landing page actually opt in, you know, they sort of become a lead. And then some of those who opt in, hopefully your salesperson, you or your salesperson contacts them straight away, a percentage of those get contacted and you have a conversation, uh, hopefully a, a high percentage of those are booked and then a high percentage of those, uh, you know, attend or they show and a high percentage of those join. But you can see how it's a sales funnel. Now, um, and, and that's and that's pretty typical. And we've, we, we've got terms saying top of funnel, m middle of funnel and bottom of funnel. And uh, sometimes the the messaging, the uh, you know the, the the language, the copy, and things like that can vary as to where people are in, you know in that funnel. And and here is a top of funnel. Firstly, you've got, and this is another way of looking at it. You've got people out there in the community who are completely unaware. They've got no knowledge of anything except perhaps their own identity or opinion about something. It might be weight loss or fitness. Then you've got people who are, and I've grayed that out because um, we're not really concerned with them. They're, they're a non-market at this stage. Then you've got people who are problem aware. Your prospect senses he, he or she has a problem, but doesn't know there's a solution. Oh, gee, I'm fat. Gee, I'm unfit. Gee, I'm low on energy. I'm not too sure what to do about it. 
then you've got people, you know, when you move down the funnel, they're a solution aware, ah, they know the result they want, uh, but not that your product provides it. So they, they say, oh, yeah, maybe I need to do some fitness or, you know, get into some health issue, you know, uh, solutions or like that. But, but they're not aware of you. Then they become product aware. Your prospect knows what you sell but isn't sure if it's right for them. They don't really know, like, or trust you yet. And then we get down the bottom of the funnel. They really, they know your product uh, and, th and they need to know the deal. So um, what I'm saying here is that d during that funnel, there are different messages for different people at different times. And the trick is to put the right message in front of the right person at the right time as to where they are. Does that make sense? Yeah. So Top of funnel, what message? An example, middle funnel, bottom. So uh, when we say the right message, my brain starts going, oh, so mm -hmm. many messages. Can you sure. give the guys an example of a top of funnel message, a middle of funnel message, and a, a bottom of funnel? For instance, I thought that a top of funnel would be, hey, um, uh, uh, let's find out a little bit more, have a little bit something for free or whatever it may be. Middle is nurturing. Show them, teach them that you're an expert, you, you know your stuff, you, and uh, you know, you've know you got some track record. Bottom of funnel, do you want to buy? Absolutely. Um, sure. uh, could you give us some examples of that? <laughs> well, a, a, a top of funnel, you know, it might be um, losing weight is easier than you thought, or, you know, uh, and it could be a, a simple lead magnet, you know, Hey, join in our free webinar, you know, uh, download our free cheat sheet, our resource guide, things like that. Uh, you know, the middle of the funnel, they're learning more about you. Oh, um, you, and you may not know that uh, in order to solve this problem, you really need this. We're the only people that do it, you know. Uh, what do you call that? Inking. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, bottom of funnel, you know, gee, we've got this special offer. We've got this six-week program about to start, blah, blah, blah. You know, so that there there are different messages at different stages in the funnel versus come and buy a membership, saying the same message to everybody. You know, I think you just explained it brilliantly. Um, uh, when you hear it coming out of someone else's mouth, and I don't know if everyone's the same as me, but you get thinking about, oh, what's my top of funnel? What's my middle of funnel? But when someone just gives some really simple examples like that, it makes all the difference. And um, I can assure you uh, that was a piece of gold, Jamie. And it just comes out of your mouth because you do it automatically. But those sorts of things make a big difference. And, you know, if you go into Facebook groups or uh, even Amazon review sites, I mean, just look at the language that people use. Look at the questions asked. Actually, Steve, even you recently on, on a Facebook group uh, asked the question, what's your number one problem in business? Or it was something like that. What's the biggest challenge you have? Uh, uh, to look at the language and the questions people are asking. And that can really inform you. Even, um, you know, just go to the news agent, look at all those, uh, you know, magazines in different categories. And look at the headlines. You know, you know those magazine editors—they've got it figured out. You know, they, and uh, and that can really inform you as to the sort of conversations that are happening in people's minds at different points in that uh, buying process. So, when it comes to getting the initial lead, getting the opt-in, something for free—did you know mm. it? This can be done easily. Yeah. Um, that's the person, and they people that don't pay usually don't buy. Usually, not all the time, but mm -hmm. it's getting the top of funnel. But when they start to get engaged, um, do we now need to do that remarketing? Um, and when we say remarketing, is that reaching out to the person that went to your website, was an old lead that had an interest before, to try to put a little bit of, let's say, um, cheese in front of them so they want to buy it again? Sure. So let's let's go back uh, and let's have a good look at um, exactly how that works. You're just so on key. So firstly, uh, just to put in perspective, you know, all marketing should be measurable. Um, you know, how many landing page views do we get? And then, because we're measuring the click-through rate from the Facebook ad to the landing page views. And of those that went to our landing page on our website, um, how many registered? So we've got a, a conversion there. Then what percentage were contacted, what percentage were booked, what percentage showed, and what percentage joined or, or were sold. So uh, just so you know, we should be able to m measure all these things because you can't improve what you don't measure. But the, the question you're asking is how do you follow up? 
and with automated. So we need to have a system of following up those who viewed the ad on Facebook or Instagram, but did not click. And there's a way of doing that. Then we need a method of following up those who clicked through to the landing page, but did not register, did not put, did not put when I mean register, did not put in their name, phone number and email. And then uh, of those who did register, there'd be some that despite you calling them straight away, you could not contact them. You know, either they didn't pick up, they were screening calls or whatever like that. And what you have on your landing page, you know, your welcome message on the landing page can make a huge difference as to whether people actually pick up the phone. You can say, I'm going to be calling you from this phone number, blah, blah, blah. So the strategy is there. Then of those people who you contacted on the phone, there are those people you contacted but did not book. Then there are those who booked an appointment but did not show. And this is all about phone scripting and um, practice drill, rehearse that outbound phone call um, because some people will make an appointment just to get you off the phone, you know, if, if you're not doing handling that correctly. And of course, those people who showed up for an appointment either in the centre, face to face or via Zoom and did not enrol. So so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six different audiences that we can automate the remarketing to. So which is like automated follow up. So now let's look at how we can do that. Um, people who view the Facebook ad, but uh, you know, and spend a bit of time on the Facebook ad, but did not go through, we can do remarketing ads on Facebook. And when I mention Facebook, we're also referring to Instagram as well. Um, those people who did go to the landing page, we can do remarketing ads, so th which basically follow them, put new ads on Facebook and, Go or, and using Google ads as well, um, because we can use remarketing pixels and Google pixels and things like that, um, to basically say, well, you're interested. Um, and Steve, no doubt, um, have you had an occasion where you've gone and checked something out? It might've been a lawn mower or golf clubs or whatever like that, and suddenly, you go into Google and here is someone, you know, sell, you know, an ad for golf clubs right in front of you. Have you ever seen that? Yeah, it happens all the time. And just yesterday you suggested I listen to a podcast. You sent it to me on Messenger and um, I listened to the podcast. And lo and behold, next thing I looked in my Facebook feed was something all about that, that, biz, that, that business. And um, it's just it's like we always think it uh, happens by magic, but no, it's all about the cookies and the um, all the things that get connected when you actually uh, do send somebody something. And they say that they listen to you anyway, but who knows if that's true. But um, and that means that I've got an interest. I listen to a podcast or instantly that sent me a Facebook ad instantly the very in, within within. 10 minutes, it was in my feed. It was automated, completely automated. Uh, they're saying, well, if, you're, if you're interested enough because you're at top of funnel, they're trying to drag you down that funnel, drag you down the funnel. You so know, to, get that, to get that to happen, like this is a great example. Um, we talked about it. You sent me something. You said, wow, that was interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, I would say that was interesting and I listened to it and I took some notes and I thought that the, the gentleman had a great presentation. However, I didn't inquire about any of his products or services, but the system then locked on to my uh, pick schools or whatever it did, and then threw something out to throw something else out to me to say, jump into the top of the funnel. Now, um, how do we find out how to do that? Because I'm sure everyone listening would love to have someone like me list to their stuff or look at it, and then all of a sudden have their ads, and that's pay to play, I'm sure. Um, Absolutely. So what would someone have to do and who would they need to find to do that? Well, uh, see, firstly, I can go to your website to see if you've got Facebook remarketing pixels installed. So any business, any fitness club or whatever should have their Facebook remarketing pixels installed with a special code that they can get from their Facebook ad manager account. You can YouTube it, you can give me a call, I'll help you, whatever. Um, 
there's loads of people who help you do that. It, it really is lit literally a 10 minute task, you know, to grab those, which means that you're building up what's called a custom audience in your Facebook ad manager of those people who have clicked through to your website. And, you know, any business has, you know, you can go to your Google Analytics and look at how many unique page views you've had, you know, people have never been there before. And it's hundreds of people walking sort of past the front doors or the website of this business. And um, they're just checking you out and they're going somewhere else because the phone ring or they just weren't interested enough. And you can be going back to them. You know, they've, they've shown enough interest to, to come and find you, but now you can at a very low cost, I'm talking about one or two or three or four or $5 a day, you know, be remarketing them via Facebook or Google ads. So it's very doable. That's, that's not hard to do. Um, so I, I, in this session, I don't want to try and explain, click here, do this, do that, do this. I, I've got pre-recorded videos to, to do that, but, um, that's just, I just want to say, this is what you got to get done. Okay. Not I, how to... I, I'm hearing it loud and clear and it's great because people need to know what, before they can then find out, you know, the, the who. But I think a lot of people don't know that um, if someone goes to their website, well, firstly, you've got to get their web website um, to have some traffic. That's another conversation. But once they get that traffic, not everyone's going to walk in the front door. So we need to have a way to be able to say, oh, by the way, you walk past my front door, here's an opportunity. And the way that you can do it with this remarketing through Facebook, through your ad manager, I think it's called this. Yeah, yeah, Facebook and Google ads too. So you can you can sort of follow them around. Uh, you know, so I think interested. the first thing that we've got to tell everybody is make sure you check to have your your um, your pick schools installed. I know lots of people who don't even know what we're talking about and say, well, and then they check and they haven't had it on there for many years, which means all that traffic has not been captured with the emails, which you can't then repurpose in sure. your Facebook. So the first well, thing is the pixel organized. Okay, we don't yet have that's right, pixels and and that's not uh let's distinguish between that and email. Let's keep on going. Um let's see, here we go. Uh so so the people who have just gone to your um landing page, but they did not give you your email, we can remarket to them via Facebook uh or Google Ads. Now the people who actually opted in now we have their email which is fantastic we've got their maybe first name maybe their phone number so we can remarket them by email via sms and a good old-fashioned phone call uh you know there are many many organizations i know clubs and partners we work with they just keep on calling until that person picks up they just in their one to 31 system or gym leads gym sales they just keep on calling and of course you can still uh remarket them via facebook FB, Facebook ads, or GA, Google ads. Um, now, there are people that you speak to, but don't book. You can remarket to them with uh, email, SMS, phone calls, Facebook, Google ads. Um, those people who booked but did not show up, you can remarket to them. And those people who showed up but did not join, you can remarket to them. So you can see that the top two uh, you can only remarket, you know, ads on Facebook. And, uh, the top one is Facebook. The second, Facebook and Google ads, um, and the but all the rest you can remarket via automated email, you know, which is uh, the way to go. And, and so, really, what we want to talk about is not is doing the work once, getting it set up, and so it's all automated and it happens in your sleep. So that's what I want to share. And I've got a, a few more uh, things to share in regards to automating it. So when it comes to automation, mm -hmm. the, the automation is uh, someone opts in, get your free thing or whatever it may be, and then they have an autoresponder. It'll be an email that gets sent out, could have a video on it, have some buttons, some extra links and so forth. Yep. That copy is something that um, you do very, very well. You have a gift. Uh, Anna Lee Gale. And Ali Matthews from uh, um, All Smiles Creative, phenomenal copywriters. Uh, um, there's a who? Anna Lee. It's fantastic. Well done. Anna Lee is amazing. She's um, fantastic. Yeah. 
So you get those people to buy out your product, they write your copy. Yeah. Um, I'm talking to an, another f- fellow that does different type of copy. His name's Cool Deep. And he actually says he likes to write story copy instead of content copy. So he's a story copy writer to make sure he brings your story to life where then people get to connect with you, not your product, different copywriter. So when there's autoresponders go out, you got to find a who to write the copy and then have the automation and um, find an automation expert and to have a CRM. Is that necessary? Yeah. Although, Steve, I just want to pick you up on that. Um, let's, let's say that, uh, you know, we've all got a cousin or a dear friend who is nowhere near us. And we wanted to write a series of letters, but, but they were important to us. A series of letters that took them through that journey of, you know, top funnel, middle funnel, you know, and just short emails or short videos or short audios and things like that. And because we knew that for the next 12 months, we weren't going to be contacted them. We want to take them through that journey based upon our passion, our fitness or weight loss experience or whatever. Um, I'm sure that with your own authentic voice, if you think what are their needs? What are the questions they're going to be answering? How can I deliver ongoing value? You can write your own copy. Now you might get spelling make spelling mistakes and grammar mistakes and stuff like that. But, you know, if, if you if you have a sincere desire to serve these people, you know, to move them to the point where they actually take action, I have no doubt that the, you know, uh, the average uh, person, you know, they don't have to doubt their own copyright skills. They can write something that is clearly authentic, you know, and short and frequent, you know, something that goes out every week, you know, uh, so, so uh, most people, it, you know, if they can talk to, you know, a new member on the gym floor and take them through that journey, induct them and stuff like that, uh, they should be able to do that. I firmly believe the good marketing and sales service and follow up, good marketing and follow up service is an indicator of good after sales service. So pre sales service, pre marketing service, following up is a good indicator of after sales service. Mm. And the good news is you can, and we're doing it all the time. When somebody, we use uh, email nurturing for for people in, in that prospect part of the sales funnel, but after they've joined, we've got pre-written emails that go out every week, you know, to help them in their weight loss journey. So we're using the exact same CRM systems uh, to help us automate the after sales service because retention is very important and getting helping people get results is, is important too. And referrals are important. All these things are important. I think you see the, the big picture can be, uh, uh, everyone has a, a big picture, but I think you put it nicely. Um, just get it done, do it yourself. It doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be perfect. A couple of things coming from your heart, uh, maybe just a few little videos if need be, uh, and just get it done and actually, uh, have a simple CRM, they're very inexpensive, and just start remarketing instead of burning your leads. Because a lot of people, we get a lead, we don't, we don't, they don't buy. Ah, oh, darn it. Um, next. Now we can certainly look after the hot ones, but I think what you're saying is sometimes we just keep knocking on the door, reminding them what we care, we're innovative, um, and by do remarketing means that you're going to help as many people as possible. And sometimes. Sometimes it might just be the right time at the right day and they'll say, let me find out more. Absolutely. And you don't have to set up, you know, a high def- definition video recording studio. You've got your smartphone just talking to the damn thing, you know, as if you care, as, you know. Uh, so let's keep on going because I do want to share a bit more about the, uh, the what. Um, so with Facebook ads. Uh, by putting pixels, you're going to establish custom audiences, which is all visitors that visit, you know, either your landing page or your website, less your members, because um, you don't want to send those uh, same messages to your members. Um, and there's going to be a different creative mix, and it's going to be a low cost media plan. So it might be, you know, a, a Facebook ad camp, you know, remarketing campaign that's 
you know, $2 a day, $5 a day, very, very, very low cost, you know, very high efficiency. You know, these are a warm market. And then, of course, you've got email systems for follow-up. Remember the bottom four? Uh, and you can have, oh, sorry about that. Um, you know, you can have an email nurturing system. I'm going to expand that. Uh, so let's have a look at that. So let's say, so somebody opts in on your form on your landing page and they go to a thank you page, but you don't contact them. Um, uh, so they get email one, it might be, a, and then day later, email two, day three, then you might hit them with an offer that might go to a, a different landing page. They didn't take that up. They get email five, email six, email seven, maybe another offer that that offer takes another landing page, email nine, 10. So email one, two, and three value, 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 email five, six, seven value, 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 give, give, give. Email 9, 10, 11, give, give, give. Um, what's the book by Gary Vaynerchuk? You know, jab, 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 right hook. Jab, jab, jab stands for give, 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 offer. Give, 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 offer. Um, and uh, so that's, but there's lots of different ways of doing an email setup. And they are very short. There might be one paragraph long emails or an email with an embedded video. Um, and when they sign up, they automatically get taken out of this nurturing system. Um, so we've got. Uh, I love that. Now, that's a great uh, uh, a chart you just showed us. It makes it really what becomes complicated verbally when you showed a picture there, Jamie, when they said opt in, thank you page, email, email. And then it said, well, offer, offer, then goes to another landing page and then continue in the funnel. A lot of funnels look really complicated. Oh, you saw. That was terrific. And as you know, I'm a visual communicator. <laughs> when I talk to you on the phone, you share these great ideas. I said, can I see that in a chart? <laughs> so, I, yeah, I'm a visual communicator. And I like to map it out and I can, ah, oh, yes, that's what I've got to get done. So uh, let's keep on going. Nearly there, nearly done. And uh, let's see. Uh, so, uh, and of course, that follow-up system can include SMS and can include Messenger as well. And uh, and there's ways of, of automating those. So, Steve, th 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 that is the key message I wanted to say to, to operators out there, that uh, the, the first message I'd like to say is instead of just having organic and what I say, passive marketing, um, paid traffic marketing can add a, a, a whole lot of extra sales to your business every week. But in that sales funnel, you don't want to just let people, you know, um, who don't respond at the different points just to fall off the wagon. It's like a leaky bucket. You really need to have an automated remarketing systems where you create it once and it happens overnight while you're sleeping. So once, once it's created, which either you create it or you outsource it, you know, instead of asking yourself, how do I do that? You say, who can do it for me? Who can help me do it? Um, uh, maybe you go to buy some tech like a CRM system, um, you know, and some of them expensive, some of them are cheaper, uh, but, you know, who can set that up for me? Um, then, I'm, you know, you write the copy yourself and uh, you can say, well, who's going to proofread my copy? It might be your auntie June or whatever like that, you know, um, can, I, I know some people who have got nothing to do with the fitness industry, but fantastic proofreaders and pick up all my terrible spelling and things like that. So all these things are doable. You may have people within your own teams who can help you with this stuff, you know? So today is, uh, is more about um, how to use marketing effectively, particularly remarketing effectively to get more bang for your buck, you know, to get, uh, more customers, more leads, more customers, more sales, and uh, without doing it, uh, you know, more work, you know, without, you know, spending an extra one or two hours at the office or working and things like that, you know, to get your business really firing on all cylinders. I think it's a, a terrific, Jamie, because um, a lot of people talk about uh, what do we do, and it becomes a, a lots of different things in different directions. But what I'm hearing loud and clear today is create an opportunity, make sure that you uh, nurture, but don't throw that all of those old emails, all those old uh, opportunities. And the ones that you don't even know, 
There's lots of options that you don't even know that walk past your door. Now you can with uh, using your pick schools. So get that sorted out and then, and then, and it's really important, put a system in place just like you just had um, and have a simple CRM and get someone to help. Find out the who's and you've got lots of opportunity just not being put on the table because you don't know what you don't know. So I think you've made it really clear on what we do need to know. And if we didn't need to outsource, we can. And there's a lot of opportunity that you're probably missing and you don't even know about it. Yeah, and Steve, I'm sure within with your within you know Impact Training Corporation, I mean clubs at minimum should have a one to thirty one system, you know, and uh, and they should have script for inbound calls and a script for outbound calls. They need to and having a script is, is no point without practice, drill, rehearse, practice, drill, rehearse. You know, getting getting all those basics right. I say. Uh, Wax on, wax off, Mr. Miyagi, you know, wax on, wax off, get the basics right, you know. Terrific. Mm. Well, look, um, I'm going to be uh, taking lots of golden nuggets from today because I think it's uh, something that's not, that people talk about but don't understand. It's like uh, someone say, oh, have you read um, uh, Think and Grow Rich or How to Win Friends and Influence People? And everyone say, yes, 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 because it's trendy to say yes. But really, in their heart of hearts, they don't know. So I think you've made it really clear and I think it's a, a, an easy to understand. Now, you've got lots of great um, uh, things that you do, Jamie. How can people reach out and speak to you? Yeah, probably the simplest is um, jamie at dietflex.com.au. You know, that's our weight loss program, which we, uh, we help clubs with all this marketing stuff uh, to attract, you know, uh, additional members every week. Uh, either members coming into the centre or remote members via Zoom. So J-A-M-I-E at dietflex, D-I-E-T-F-L-E-X dot com dot E-U and be happy to have a conversation and find out where you're at and where your goals are and and uh, help you move it ahead, creating additional work for your team, uh, recruiting extra clients, extra members and basically uh, helping deliver fantastic results and getting more people active. And I'm, I'll put the uh, the email address uh, in the in the um, the notes. But guys, uh, let me just give you a throwaway here. <clears throat> what Jamie's just shown you is what he actually does for. I mean, he has he's CEO of three companies, so um, he has a, a team of people that created these uh, lead machines. Right? That's what I call them. Yeah. And they create leads, and what they do is they remarket the leads. See, this is Jamie not just talking out of a book. This is actually what he does twenty four seven. And I've been privy to see uh, the numbers of what he does create through these remarketing models and his pay to play processes, which are uh, very uh, inexpensive pay to plays, but the returns are quite significant. And if you're working with Jamie with Diaflex or Keto Fitness or whatever, um, he does that all for you. Uh, oh, his team does. So um, I'm not talking out of school here a little bit, but I can assure you guys, this is not just out of a textbook. This is actually someone that's walking the talk and actually doing it. I've seen, I've seen the numbers and it's quite significant and we're not leaving any opportunity on the table and lots of automation, but uh, uh, there's a system in place and Jamie ha has uh, perfected it uh, for his products and services. So what Jamie shared with you today is gold because it's allowing you to then say, what do I need to do? Look, Jamie is a who and there's other people you can ask, but I would strongly recommend that you reach out to have a chat with Jamie. Um, very generous with uh, his uh, things he shares always bring something to the table and share back. I would suggest <laughs> if we, we do that uh, a, a lot. But uh, Jamie, thanks a lot for all of your, your, uh, your help with uh, this. I think it's great. Steve, it's absolutely a pleasure. I hope I've helped raise the awareness and I appreciate your kind comments. Terrific. All right, gang, action is everything. What are you gonna do? Reach out to Jamie. I mean, we could spend all day talking about remarketing and uh, <laughs> we would have even just touched the edges. I know you, now I've got notes down. Where I get frustrated, now just in my little bubble here, is when I, I hear people say, I don't know what to do. I believe it's a really important in this day and age that we reach out and ask for help. Uh, I can talk for, for myself. I'm quite resilient and I'm quite driven, but I can assure you, um, uh, I need help. 
And I think we all need help. It's that you need to find out a who or where to find a who. Reach out, speak to Jamie, speak to me, speak to your friends. Don't be a solo warrior and, and fail. Be someone that said help and kick some goals. Thanks for joining me today. And uh, we'll see you soon. Bye for now.